I'm Chris Duke and today on Motors we're going to talk about killer headlamp replacement bulbs for your ride, including how to install them and properly aim them. There are three different kinds of headlamp replacement bulbs for your vehicle. There's the stock original equipment ones, like those on our F-150 here, which are generally acceptable. And then there's the opposite end of the spectrum, which are super bright HIDs. Now, aftermarket HIDs aren't exactly plug and play. They can be kind of expensive, not to mention illegal. Now, there is a way to upgrade your stock headlamp bulbs, dramatically increase visibility, and installing them is no different than swapping out a stock bulb. Plus, there's no need to run any extra wiring or even a relay because they use the same wattage as your stocks. Now I'm talking about Hella's High Performance Xenon Blue Halogen Bulbs. And when we come back from our break, I'm going to show you the difference between their bulbs. I'm going to show you how easy it is to install them, aim them, and a whole lot more. Welcome back to Motors. As you can see here, Hella hooked us up with a whole lot of glass so that we can show you what they offer when it comes to upgrade bulbs for your vehicle. All right, here we have their high performance xenon blue halogen bulbs as well as their high performance xenon yellow halogen bulbs. So what's the difference between these two guys? Well, it's really up to you which look you want to go for. The blue bulbs are going to give you that xenon look that most modern cars have, while the yellow bulbs are going to give you that GT racing look. Now, either way, they both increase safety due to the brighter bulbs, and they're both SAE and DOT approved for use in any vehicle. Now, with that being said, even though they are approved for street use, some cities may have local laws that override this. So be sure to check with your local laws before performing any type of headlamp upgrade just to be on the safe side. Now, if you'd like to check out a complete listing of all the upgrade bulbs and their specs, go to their website at myhellalights.com, where you can also find a list of retailers. But Hella doesn't just have bulb upgrades for headlamps only. They also offer a complete range of bulbs such as H1, H3, H13, and more for driving and fog lamps too. They work not only for factory lamps, but also for universal aftermarket lamps. All right, enough talk. We've got some bulbs and we've got a truck. Let's hook it up. As you may recall, last season in episode 22, we upgraded our 2005 Ford F-150 pickup truck with awesome LED tail lights as well as these bitchin' looking headlamp replacements from Hella. The stock bulbs are still in there, so let's upgrade one of them with Hella's H13 Xenon Blue Bulbs, and then I'll show you the difference in the amount of light between the stock bulb and the Hella bulb. But first, let's talk about the proper handling of bulbs. Now, it's extremely important that you don't get any oils from your hands or anything else on the bulb surface. If you do, it's going to create hot spots on the bulb, which is going to decrease its lifespan. Now, if you do happen to accidentally touch the bulb or get some other gunk on it, just grab some rubbing alcohol and wipe it off. Just be sure to allow the bulb to dry completely before installing it. So, always wear gloves or use a clean rag or paper towel whenever possible to avoid damaging the bulb. Now, let's go ahead and upgrade the driver's side. We're going to leave the passenger side stock for now so I can show you the differences in a bit. Removing this headlamp lens on our F-150 is really easy. Just take a Phillips screwdriver and remove this plunger clip that's right on top of this splash guard. And then take a 10 millimeter socket with an extension, remove the bolt that's on top, and behind the splash guard there's going to be two more, one right about there, one right about here. You want to get rid of those two. Once you've got the 10 millimeter bolts out, you can remove the headlamp. There's actually a little bit of a plastic clip that's on top here that you have to pull up. But before you remove this, you want to make sure you don't scratch your paint. So I recommend either stuffing some rags down in there or just taking some blue tape and kind of protecting your paint a little bit. 
just like that. Let me put a couple on there. You definitely don't want to scratch your paint when you're doing this. There, that ought to do it. Just carefully wiggle it on out. Then disconnect the wiring harnesses and the bulb. To remove the stock bulb, you just give it a twist from the back of the lens housing and it'll come right out. And as you can see, it looks about the same size as the stock one. The hell one is noticeably bluer. Now, it's important to mention again, this is a direct replacement, so there's no need to do any extra wiring or run relays or anything. Just take the new bulb, push it into the back, and give it a twist. Now we've got the H13 bulb in there from Hella. We can just reinstall it back into the vehicle. Now it's really that easy. Now let's take this truck someplace dark so we can compare the Hella bulb with the OEM one. Now anytime you replace a headlamp bulb or the lens, you should check your headlights to make sure they're still aligned properly. It's actually really easy to do and there's a lot of different ways to aim your headlights, but I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest way that I know how. Now all you need is a tape measure and some masking tape. I recommend the blue stuff because it's a lot easier to see. A screwdriver will do the job for many vehicles, but for our F-150, we just have this single post back here for alignment. We're just going to use a pair of pliers to twist that. Now find a vertical white wall and a level surface. You can use your garage door if your driveway is level. Place your vehicle as close as possible to the wall, about six inches will do. Then turn on your low beams and mark the horizontal center lines with your masking tape. Then mark the vertical center lines with tape. This is used to check your side to side alignment. It may help to have a buddy stand behind the vehicle looking through the back window to assist in the placement of the tape. You want this to be dead on. Now using your tape measure and masking tape, mark a spot on the ground exactly 25 feet away from the wall, then pull the vehicle straight back from the wall by that amount. Using the headlamps adjustment screws for horizontal and vertical alignment, again on our F-150 we just have a single post, position the most intense part of the light two inches below the horizontal line and two inches to the right of the vertical lines. It's always best to aim lower and to the right so you don't offend oncoming traffic. Since this truck has a single headlamp lens for both low and high beams, once they're aimed, you're done. However, if you have a separate lens for high beams, you're going to need to repeat this process for the second set of lenses. By the way, it's also a good idea to check them yearly as they can become naturally misaligned. Now we wanted to show you the difference between the brightness of the factory Ford bulb, which is on the passenger side, and the Hella bulb, which is on the driver's side. Now I had Jason, my camera guy, tweak the aperture on the camera slowly to show you the difference. It's a little bit hard to pick up on the camera, but I can tell you in person, there's quite a difference. We need to go to a break, but when we come back, we'll show you how much effort goes into the creation of something that's been around since 1879. All Hella light bulbs undergo painstaking tests by their engineers before they reach the stores where you ultimately buy them. It's a ton of work, but it pays off when you need them most. They use state-of-the-art equipment to prove the high reliability of bulbs over a long period of time during their service life test. And vibration and shock equipment test the bulbs to ensure that the filaments and other components hold up to the vibrations while driving. 
Another test is used to check the filament geometry to ensure that they hold up to specific industry standards. For example, the filament has to have the size and position within a specific bulb. This results in the best light possible while at the same time preventing oncoming drivers from being blinded. To guarantee optimum light output of Hella's bulbs, this crazy looking thing called an Ulbrich sphere and goniometer are used. And finally, a paint adhesion test is performed. A climate chamber tests the adhesion of paint on colored glass bulbs at different temperatures and air humidities. These and further tests are performed by Hella's quality assurance engineers to ensure that all Hella bulbs live up to the brand name so many of us rely on. And now it's time for parts. There are a ton of different tonneau covers out there, ranging from hard fiberglass ones to soft roll-up covers. If you've got a pickup truck, you've got to get one to help protect your valuables from the elements as well as thieves. This access roll-up cover gives you the adaptability you need and the sporty look you want. They make them for just about every truck out there. The access cover is the most versatile truck accessory you'll ever own and comes with a lifetime warranty which covers all the components, including the fabric. Another great product they make is this Easy Retriever, which is going to help you fetch gear from your truck. It extends all the way to the front of your truck box, up to 5 feet 9 inches, and it's easy to store and use. For more information on these products, check out AccessCover.com, or check out our installation episodes at the Motors website. Air Intake Systems are one of the most popular aftermarket modifications that owners do to their rides. Advanced Flow Engineering have developed a great system with their ProDrive filter that increases horsepower and torque for just about every vehicle out there. Now, this particular intake system is for our 2004 F-150. It gives you an additional 16 horsepower and 23 foot-pounds of torque. You can look for an upcoming episode of Motors where we show you how to install this kit. Now, For more information, head on over to afepower.com. If you're looking to increase horsepower and torque in your vehicle, as well as lower the temperature underneath the hood, then you need to get an electric fan. Now, Flexolite makes electric fans for just about every make and model out there. This one's for a Ford F-150. It's got dual 15-inch fan blades and gives us an additional 17 horsepower and 20 foot-pounds of torque while also improving gas mileage. Now we're going to install this very same one here on an upcoming episode of Motor, so be sure to check that out. And for more information on Flexolite fans, go to Flexolite.com. If you've got a ton of junk in your trunk or stuff scattered all over the place inside your ride, the Covercraft has a solution for you. With applications for trucks, Mustangs, Jeeps, Corvettes, and more, these pocket pods are perfect for holding wax, tire pressure gauges, tools, and more. Now with a no-drill installation, pocket pods are perfect for any ride. For more information, head on over to their website at Covercraft.com. Letters. Our first letter comes to us today from Justin Saunders who writes, can you tell us about the flooring in the motor's garage? How easy is it to install? Is it easy to clean and wipe up fluids? Well, it's actually called Race Deck, and you can find more information about this product at racedeck.com. And there's a lot of imitators, which I've tried, and they kind of suck, so you want to stick with the Race Deck brand. You can go to their website, and they have a whole bunch of different colors. They have uh, solids like this. They have uh, perforated versions that let water soak through, and it's really easy to install and cut. Um, it just kind of fits together with these little snaps, so it's really easy to to rip it apart and put different squares together. Now I put this floor in myself a few years before we started Motors TV and it's lasted this entire time and it still looks great. It's real easy to clean, you just wipe up any fluids that get on it. Um, if a tile does break, if you drop something on it and it uh, rips apart or something like that, I haven't had that happen. But as you can see, it's real easy to break up a piece and just put in a new piece. So racedeck.com for that. Uh, our next letter is from Casey Leslie who writes, I just recently bought an air horn for my 2008 Toyota Tacoma. Where would be the best place for me to put the horns and the air compressor? Well, Casey, we just did an episode uh, last season, I think it was, for uh, how to install air horns, train horns on a, on a F-150 pickup truck. And what we did is we put all the equipment underneath the vehicle, except for the, uh, actually the horns were underneath the vehicle, the air compressor and the tank were in the bed of the truck. 
Uh, now, if you don't have a whole lot of space in the bed of your truck, what I recommend is trying to find some space underneath the vehicle, but you just want to make sure that you put that air compressor in the bed of your truck, and probably not in the cab because it can get loud, because uh, you want to keep it away from the elements. But the air compressor, the tank itself, as well as the horns can go beneath the vehicle, and you just really need to get it and then kind of put it up in different places and see where it can fit. Um, but for a good overview and how we did the wiring and everything, check out that train horns episode that we did on the F-150. See, Mike Coyle writes, there's a lot of talk about the terrible sound of MDS drone and aftermarket exhaust. Any suggestions? Well, that's a problem. What MDS is, it's a multi-displacement system in Chrysler engines. And what happens when you just cruise on the highway, it cuts off half the cylinders and just makes it more fuel efficient. Um, the problem there is when that happens, and it can happen quite a bit, is that the sound note from your exhaust is going to change and if the aftermarket exhaust that you have doesn't accommodate for that tone change it's going to sound really nasty and really get in your head and you're going to get this drone inside the car or the cab of your pickup truck so what i do recommend is that you talk to a manufacturer and ask them specifically if they handle mds drone for your Hemi engine, and if they don't have a good answer for it, then don't buy it. But uh, ask around, also check some online forums, and of course, you can head on over to our forums at the Motors TV website and ask the very same question. I'm sure you'll get a lot of answers there as well. Let's see, Will Stark writes, I was wondering if you could do a show showing how to debadge a car. Well, we did that, and it's also a quick tip. So every now and then we do these quick tips, which are usually like a 30 to 60 second video that shows you how to do something. But the first episode of season three, we also have a segment on there on how to do it. And so I recommend you checking that out. Just head on over to our website and select the quick tips section of our videos. And you can watch that and you can be informed in, uh, you know, 30 seconds or so. Let's see, Evan Taylor writes, I would like to know why you forgot to do the zoot at the end of the last show. Well, Evan, that's something we don't do all the time, as you have noticed. Um, we do it when we get the feeling to do it, uh, and we don't know what it is exactly. It's just, you know, maybe it's a play on the Z that's in motors, but uh, we don't do it every time. We do it, uh, you know, every now and then when we, uh, when we get the urge to do so. Um, and you can check out uh, uh, what was it, uh, the episode that we did at the end of the first season that has an explanation there. Um, I don't know if that's the best explanation on what a zoot is, but here it is. Zoot! All right, our next letter is from Rob Boswell. And he writes, uh, what type of hair gel do you use? Well, Rob, like everybody in the automotive industry, every morning I throw on a little bit of royal purple. Now, if you'd like to get your letter featured on Motors TV, just head on over to the Motors website. That's www.motors.tv slash letters. It's letters with a Z, just like Motors. And you can put in your letter, and we'll answer it on a future episode, hopefully, and we'll even send you a free sticker. So check that out. Now it's time for Viewer Rides. This is a picture of a stock Grabber Orange Mustang. And this is not. The owner is Mike Wilkes, who's an assistant editor for Motors TV, a photographer and a writer for Muscle Car Blog. Welcome to the first installment of Rides, a weekly segment where we highlight one of our viewers' rides on the show. Next week it could be you, but this week we're featuring Mike's ride for a couple of reasons. Motors is created by real enthusiasts such as Mike for enthusiasts. Plus, Mike's ride needed some national televised attention because it's, well, it's badass. What started out as a bone stock 2007 Ford Mustang GT quickly turned into an asphalt ripping twin turbo racing machine, literally within a matter of weeks after he took delivery. In fact, Mike had most of the parts stored up on his living room floor before he even took delivery of the car. We estimate it was stock for probably about 12 and a half seconds, which is exactly how long it takes this orange beast to run a quarter mile. 
Now, most of the work Mike did himself, either in his home garage or down at the local shop with the help of Fastlane Incorporated in Houston, Texas. This is the same performance shop that hooked us up with a custom tune for our own 2008 Project Mustang in an episode we featured last season. Mike's drivetrain and engine features Fastlane's Turbo 2 Twin Turbo in a custom engine tune, Tremex TR6060 six-speed tranny with an aluminum drive shaft, ceramic coated headers, Canton Racing aluminum tanks, a 32 spline clutch, a GT500 differential because Mike twisted the OEM one up pretty good, charge motion delete plates from Ford Racing, a Magnaflow 3 inch exhaust and mufflers, SCT's XCAL 2 programmer, a Brembo four wheel brake upgrade, and Steeda underdrive pulleys. Now the exterior is customized with a 3D carbon Boy Racer body kit, which we're going to be installing on a future episode of Motors, Keystone Restyling Boy Racer Good Hood, Nitto NT05 275 30 ZX20s with Ziox ZX8 black 20 inch wheels. His suspension mods include a strut tower brace, lower control arms, upper adjustable control arm, LCA relocation brackets, as well as a front and rear sway bar, all from BMR. And Eibach Pro Series suspension springs, and from Steeda, adjustable panhard bar and brace, adjustable upper strut mounts, and a Tokiko D-Spec shocks and struts to wrap it all up. I guess you can say that Mike's pretty much done everything you can possibly do to a Mustang from top to bottom. His passion for the automotive industry really shines in this Mustang, which he fondly refers to as Cheese Whiz. Yep, Cheese Whiz. You can see more of his ride at musclecarblog.com. And to see your vehicle featured on a future episode, just visit our website. Check out the Motors TV website to watch all of your favorite episodes and more. And talk with other viewers online in our popular forums area. Catch the latest news and information surrounding the show, as well as the entire automotive industry. Take Motors with you on the road with our free app available for the iPhone and iPod Touch. And win free parts by entering in our monthly giveaway. It's all right here at www.motors.tv. Welcome back to Motors. Abrasion from road debris and yellowing due to the sun's UV rays can deteriorate the plastic and will significantly affect the light output. Now, upgrading and aligning your headlights isn't difficult at all and is something you can easily do on your own within a few hours on the weekend. Now, for more information on Hella's products, go to myhellalights.com. And of course, for more episodes of Motors, head on over to motors.tv. We'll catch you next time. I've ever had with my clothes on.